Welcome back to another episode of Shit, I'm 30. We have two episodes today, so you have this one and you have a bonus one, so enjoy them both. I wanted to have a quick announcement about the 24th of this month, August, at Loud Gallery. I'm going to be there for a speed friending event. So we're basically just going to go out and get to know each other, play some games, ask some questions, drink, of course. I'll be done with my juice and cleanse by then, so I'm going to drink all the liquid there. And on that day, the 24th, I'm making a big announcement for you guys. And we're celebrating today the fact that I found out that we hit $10,000 a month. So so I feel cool. like I really gave myself a year. Like when we started, I said I, one year to do this. And it's like five and a half months. So cool. I'm so excited about that. But anyway, I'm your host, Carla. And I'm here with, again, <laughs> a, a, a new one of my co-hosts and friends, Anthony. Hey, y'all. What's going on? And Dexty's here. Yes, I'm here. And I was trying to leave before he got here because I don't got on no makeup. This is my first time actually like meeting him in person, besides one drunk time where we don't really remember <laughs> right. meeting each other. Man, and I'm like, I don't got on no makeup. I got on like, I don't even know what this outfit is I put on before I left house. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I really want her to stay because they was having, they're wrapping up their conversation. And I was like, oh, my God, I really like her perspective. Like, stay. Right. She and brings then, a good energy in the room. And she then you brought in the story you finna tell. She was right. like, ooh, this juicy. Yeah, right, right. This right. story's gonna be good. Oh, God. And I don't know how you... You know what? I feel like you you will fit it fit in into our topic in a different way, though. Yeah. Because I feel like we put it one way, and you put it a whole... You direct it a whole different way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, in the first segment, shit you should know, I wanted to talk about something that I saw online, and I thought it was amazing. It was a woman. So a Walmart cashier stepped up to a woman that has cerebral palsy. She went to the nail salon and she tried to get her nails done. And as you know, like with that disease, and if you don't know, you shake kind of like Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. So it, they can't really control it. So she just tried to go get her nails done. And I'm sure and mingling in there was like, no, it'll be too hard for me to get your nails done for you to get your nails done. And they refused her. So the cashier saw her as a black woman. And where is this? In Washington, I think it is, Oregon, I don't know, some weird place, Michigan. And she said, I'll do them for you. So she went to the aisle, she worked at Walmart, got some nail polishes, picked up a few colors, and they went to the subway eating area and painted the nails for her. That's, That's so, so sweet. sweet. So amazing. It, it is, yeah. it is. And it just goes to show like how us as a people that we mm -hmm. are taught to take care of each other yes. and stuff especially when corporations and stuff throw us away it's like mm -hmm. no we got you we're a community it yeah. doesn't matter where you come from we're, we're just and i feel like yeah. it shouldn't matter yeah. their ethnicity yeah. but here in now the recent years everything is just like we're Maybe. killing black women or the anger of black women or just black people period she's a black woman and the woman that was that has the cerebral palsy is a white woman yeah. right so right. she didn't let what's going on now in society like if somebody sees me will they judge me will they think i'm you know i'm against black people or something no she said you know it's human to human exactly. yeah. you need help they're being assholes i will help you right yeah. right and sometimes we need to look i know we need to i need to be better about looking at yeah past. you do but this you this, do. this was a good thing to see a black like you were saying see a black woman just you know come and just be so catering that way so yeah yeah i, I like it big ups big i love it so it's shout out to her for doing that. I think her name is Ebony. Black Excellence. Black, Black Excellence. excellence just like you read. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's another one. I thought it was hilarious. It was a man. So, what would you do if you were married? You know, come to the U.S., your woman's back in whatever country because she can't come here yet, and you got to be sending her money every day. And here comes this man. She called every day. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. I need more money. I need more money. Listen. So, Gustavo, I don't know if that's his name. <laughs> Gustavo was pissed off. And he said, listen, Maria, stop fucking calling me. <laughs> so she said, now nah, you got to give me my money. You know, run, run me my money. So he said, all right, well, I'm going to run you this. He went into the bed, put some cotton in his nose, put some white sheets over himself, laid on the bed, took pictures, and faked his own no death. No way. Oh my God. Yes, yes, so sent yes. the pictures over to the wife and said that he died. So it started getting around and like his wife was distraught. So he's like, bitch, I'm dead. That's you, so horrible. You can't come to the U.S. where I'm at. Yeah. And verify. Somebody the scanner, honey, because she has For been real. Out, she has been out. <laughs> so the picture circulated throughout the family and, like, relatives. And they noticed that he was in a twin-size bed. The sheet over him was actually pillowcases. <laughs> <laughs> and the nigga was smirking during the picture. That is horrible. <laughs> that is smart. That's smart. Look. But Gustavo should have looked at some better pictures of dead people because he don't fuck them. He yeah. is smiling. Look wow. at the picture. He's smiling. Girl. <laughs> you had a photo 
whole set on the page. So I wonder how did this even get out? Like, did she call the cops or something? Oh my God, my husband's dead. Right, baby. trying to get his body yeah. sent back to the country. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Oh my God. He had to come up Men and just tell trash. the truth. He, he ended up having to tell <laughs> the truth. He's going to go through all that to get out of his responsibility. He really? and shit. He and shit. Ugh. But listen, she needs to stop asking for so much damn money. Look, like, but that's chill. the whole point, though, right? Don't they? They all work together to save up money to send so one of them one here and then the other to one. get a job so they could take. I care think of what happened is that home. Maria got like no, too he comfortable. Got over here, he was like, "Dang, <laughs> I could be balling if I didn't have to send this back home. <laughs> <laughs> I could spend more money at the strip club." I've I been thinking about that when I when I get mad at Ayana, like how I could be balling if you weren't around, <laughs> oh and I'm like, "Piss me off one more time, see how quick You're I send you, horrible. send you somewhere else, and use all my money, <laughs> leave you ass eating ramen noodles." why i go eat a steak oh my gosh he's dead wrong i thought that was funny yeah that's hilarious anywho so today's topic um has to do with something i have struggled with i think that it's anger management and just anger period and i think it's something for me at least is like a like recovering addicts they're yeah. forever struggling with an addiction yeah. i think that's accurate so i feel anger you're always dealing with it and you're you're always working on it. So it's not something that just automatically goes away. I'm not going to become Zen and a yogi like DJ and not let anything <laughs> bother me mm-hmm. like at a snap of a finger. Yeah. So I'm sitting here thinking like, who else has this issue? Who can relate to me? Who can feel like uh-huh. I did? Why? Because I went to anger management for years. Uh-huh. Really? Yes. So they put me, my parents put me in, I believe it was like three years in school and they would come and get me out of class and I would have to do A, B, and C. But sometimes being in there made me even more mad. Like, bitch, I don't want to be here. <laughs> Then they first put me in like a Spanish one. And I'm like, I don't want to do this shit. It was just a mess. It never did anything for me. Did I take anything out of it? No, I think I was too young and I just wasn't in the mood for I knew I was angry for certain reasons. Mm-hmm. And those reasons weren't changing. So I think my parents were putting it on me. I said, she's just an angry child. And it's like, well, I think I'm so angry for a reason. How did you tell me you were an angry child? Did you throw tantrums? Did you got in fights? I was always lot? fighting. Okay. And it didn't matter who it was. I was going to fight my daddy. I was going to fight my mama. I fought my siblings. I damn near hit my grandma one time. Oh. Like, it was just, I was always, that was my form of screaming. And if you weren't listening to me, because usually now I know that when you're screaming, people aren't listening right, to you. Right, right. So I'm screaming. They're not listening to what I'm saying. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Now I'm getting real pissed off. Now I'm going to swing. All right. And if you don't hear me, you're going to feel me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was it was that pattern. Plus, I was taught to fight and told to yeah, fight growing too. up. Yeah. So it was like, if you don't fight, then we're going to hit you. And it's like, oh, well, I got, if, I, if it's cool for me to fight then, right. it got to be cool for me to fight you too. Right, mm-hmm. right. It wasn't, but I had to... See, I come from a family. I come from a hard family. Like, mm-hmm. I tell people this all the time. I come from the hood. My, my family <laughs> is hood. And the way we deal with things was, like, the men, we don't argue. We knocking your ass out. Mm-hmm. But the women, it's like... Like you, they will go to a hundred and then try to break everything in the house and then try to fight. Like I just grew up around seeing people fighting, and it just it was normal to me. Yeah. So yeah, all through middle school, high I'm not high school, middle school, um, elementary school, I uh, I fought a lot, and it was just me defending myself mostly because you know, hey, I'm for when I was always a new kid, my mom believed in not keeping us in one stage, um, one place. Mm. So every year we moved. Oh wow. So I went to like seven different um, elementary Do schools. Do you know why? But yeah, it was because when she moved here from Jersey, she was a straight A student. And then my grandmother moved here, um, well, moved to Jacksonville and like she moved into the hood. And it just really like my mom got with the wrong girls and everything like that. And she felt like, you know, peer pressure actually got her off her path of being mm. successful. So oh. she was like, my kids would never like, I, I don't want you to have friends. You're, you don't have friends. Friends yeah. are bad. Friends are bad and everything. I'm your friend. So she just didn't want us to be influenced by people. Got it. So yeah, we so, moved around. But that turned like, into you being picked on. Cause, yeah, because I was always the new kid. And then, you know, depending on type of schools I went to, maybe I might come speak in a certain way. And then it's just not what they do in that particular type of hood. And right. then on top of that, I was gay so it was like i'm the new kid i'm the gay guy let's try to fight him yeah so i always had to fight within my first couple of months of school just to try to oh prove my, my dominance and the certain it's like look you can't beat my ass and yeah. then that's the way i gain my respect but yeah. then once you gain the respect you had to start all over somewhere else yeah so yeah. now they respect start, me exactly, now i gotta go exactly exactly wow. I had to, and all the way up until like my ninth or tenth grade year like that's when that stopped which wow. is kind of oh, like crazy tenth funny. grade it just flipped on his head i was by then i was a socialite because i'm so used to moving around right so you can pick it up quick i picked it up quickly yeah dang you ever fought dex no i've never been in a fight (laughs) i think we talked about this before look at at her arms can you imagine dex fighting (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> she would I, run. You know, now at my age, what I do now, and this is one of the things I'm currently struggling with, I was taught, like you said, to cuss somebody out or hit their ass, right? Right. So I can't do that. I can get sued now. I right. have a whole business. We yeah. got things so to lose. We got things to lose. So what I end up doing is cutting people off, yeah. like cold turkey. Yeah. Like I would stop answering your phone calls. I would just... It's like just remove myself Mm -hmm. and I have to sit down and really think now and wonder what it it was that pissed me off because in that moment, I don't know what I might do. I I will snap. So I have to do that. And yeah, that's not healthy. Even saying that, Mm -hmm. now you're going to the other spectrum of it because I think we have to learn to manage our anger so it doesn't, because we're getting overwhelmed. By the time it hits us, some people, they get angry and it takes like, let's say a couple of hours or uh, a bunch of instances for us or for me. It's just, it's an instant. It can be 10 seconds. Do this wrong. Well, I think I've gotten a lot better with it, but it will overwhelm me quickly and I needed to learn how to do that. And it's a natural human emotion. Mm -hmm. Like anger, just like happiness is just like being whatever emotion you're happy. It's happy. Anger is one of them. We're all going to experience it at one point in time. And we have to find a way to deal with it. And I feel like for most that get overwhelmed easily, they do need therapy. Yeah. I need it. I want, I've gone to therapy and I feel like I needed therapy and it helped and it helped speaking to certain people. So you have to find like the strategies for you that start and find out what triggers you. Right. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I think yeah. that's, that's a good point because when someone's making you angry, right? A lot of times it's not just what this particular person is doing. It's what it's taking you back to. Right. So it's like, you are not going to try me like this person a long time ago tried me. Right. You know what I mean? And made me feel vulnerable or made me feel weak. Right. Like you're you're going back to that. You're going back to or something that they did to you before. You never forgave it. You never exactly. talked about it. And yeah. it's like now you're doing. Yeah. You're being like extra. for Bertram, if somebody say the wrong thing, it's like I, I'm going back to my childhood where I had to prove that I was a tough guy or else I was going to probably get my ass beat every right. day. Exactly. You know, my whole thing is uh, when people I get angry, my values are like disrespect. Yes. And one of the things I really high hold in high regard is respect. Mm-hmm. If I feel like if you disrespect me, it's I'm like, gonna fuck you up. I'm gonna fuck you up, and it takes me back to childhood when I felt disrespected. Disrespect. You couldn't do anything, anything couldn't about do anything. it until unless exactly. you're expressing beating somebody's ass. Exactly. Because yeah. that's that's all that's ever triggered me. It's respect, mm-hmm. and now it's if you mess with my child mm-hmm. or you mess with my money. Right, right, right. It, it, there's those, those three. Mm-hmm. That's it. Everything else, I am so carefree. Right. Yeah. Do say whatever you want to me. Call me whatever names you want. I'm, I don't react to that stuff. Mm-hmm. But those three things, I react. And I've reacted recently. So right. we, we have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Let's share a story of when you were super angry and something. You let's did. go back to, to an amateur one. Do you remember your first fight? Yes. Uh, do I remember my first fight? <laughs> I remember my first major fight. Because um, I, like I told y'all, I always oh, been so, fighting. So. Oh, so you don't remember the first one. Oh, my God. This is... Tell me, I mean, tell us about your first major fight. Like, so, my first major fight was uh, basically the story, like I told you, the narrative I told you. I was um, in a new school, um, me and my sister both by this time. She was going to the elementary school, and I was going to the middle school. And um, we moved into this neighborhood, and my sister was getting picked on um, oh, at the no. park. So, you know, me being a big brother, I got to come step up and all this other stuff. And, um, you know, we're sitting there, we're arguing, and my mom comes over, and she's like, hold up, hold up. Y'all motherfuckers gonna stop this right now. Separate, everybody step, you know, step back. Which one of y'all wanna fight my son? Ooh. And it's just like... It's like them Instagram videos. Mom, mom, and she's like, pick one. one, it's, one it's no jumping in. If y'all jump in, I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna whoop y'all ass. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. pick one. Which one of y'all wanna fight my son? Some boy I did not know at all. He had, I was in the sixth grade. This dude had to be in like the eighth or ninth grade. He was like, I'll fight him. And never knew to do, and I just had to get in the ring. Basically, it was like a oh ring and God. fight this dude. Yes. Wow. And then it didn't stop there. I bit him and I whooped his ass. I tried my best. <laughs> and I was like, if you don't beat his ass, I'm going to beat your ass right. when you yeah. get home. Yeah, yeah. And I was I like, that. no, now that bitch is crazy. I, I got to win this fight. So I did everything I possibly could, you know. And then fast forward a couple of weeks later, I, I'm walking to the store and I see these group of guys come. And then um, this the dude that I was fighting ran behind the dude and started running after me. <gasps> so I just took off running and screaming for my mom. And then my mom jumped off the uh, porch. And how old were you? I was in the sixth grade. Six or eleven. And me and my mom were fighting in the middle of the street. Fight like, boys. Fighting you and boys. your mom? Me and my mom. Side oh, because she's fighting them with she you. She's fighting with me. And right. That's what they, and that's what I'm saying. Fighting just has always been like how we solve our problems in my household. I so I and sent you I sent you these questions I beforehand. I went so quick. This is. <laughs> <laughs> 
But that's not the way to handle things. I have learned no, that it through trial and but error. But this is yes. this is our reality. Yes. That, yes. And then people don't think about it. So I I couldn't think of the first time I fought because I'm like I've been fighting for so long. Right. So I text my sister and I'm like, do you remember when my first fight was or the first one that you can remember since you're older? Mm-hmm. Maybe you remember something. She goes, girl, really? I don't know. Maybe when you were three days old. <laughs> and you're like, okay, ass. So that's how long it's been. But I. I, I remember the first couple of fights, and it was my, my brother would get beat up. My little brother. He was just like a, a four-eyed, bottle glass, a nerd. Right. So he had this friend. I remember his name, his name was Forrest. And one day, my brother came home. God, he must have been in elementary school. And the guy hit him with a two-by-four. <gasps> and he came home with a, a swollen eye and a big old thing in his head. So my dad puts me, and I think he had like a little sports car at the, at the time, in the neighborhood all white neighborhood at the time mm-hmm. puts me in the car and goes get it and i'm like well, what am i about to do he's like let's go takes me to the kid house now this mm-hmm. kid's parents used to work all the time so he was always home alone okay. calls the kid out outside in this neighborhood and he goes beat his ass and i said what he goes beat his ass and i'm like he goes if you don't beat his ass i'm gonna beat your ass so I had to get this boy out start beating on him i have him on the ground and he goes you're not gonna stop till i see blood Daddy, what? Oh You're God. psycho. Right. And my, he literally had his fist balled uh-huh. up and cocked back. And if I stopped, I was going to get my ass beat. Yeah. So I, I just swung, swung, swung until I got a little bit of blood out. And I was like, can we stop now? Can we stop now? And he was like, all right, let's go. Left his ass there, fucked up, and went home. And I, till this day, don't know why these people never did. I don't know if they ever did. I mean, my dad paid them off. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I just know I went home and it was like, I forgot all about it. recognize that y'all, both of y'all first fights, you're being instructed to fight. Like you are being taught from your elders that this is the correct way to resolve an issue. It was like, it reminds me of a story of like um, teaching dogs how to fight. Like dogs are not like aggressive creatures, excuse me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we throw them in the ring. And then we grow up and they're like, why are you so angry? Why are you so violent? Nigga, you made me this way. Exactly. You You taught me. You didn't teach Mama. me to talk it out. Oh, yeah. no, you didn't not at teach all. me to count to you five. Did not. And no. You did not. no. Like, yeah. And wow. it's so crazy now. Like, me and my mom, I can tell she's going through therapy. And um, I can see her tools or whatever when we're on the phone. Like, I'm so used when we were young. We'll get at it. And it was just like, we'll call each other all types of names and stuff. <laughs> so, growing up, like, in my 20s, you know, I'm ready. Like, me and my mom have a disagreement. I was like, wait, well, bitch, I'm ready for it because oh I'm used to gosh, it. Like, are crazy. you ready to get right. into it? And my mom will stop. I'm not going to do this with you, Tony. Yes, she's, she's like, getting it. I'm gonna call you tomorrow, and we'll go ahead and we'll discuss some things. That, that's cool. amazing. And I'm like, what? And you know, growth what? at that age is that much harder. Yes, it's so much harder. So, so yeah, kudos to her. And I'm just like, mom, I'm so proud of you. Like, I really yeah. thought I had to get ghetto with you, and I did. Yeah. I, mean, I don't do this in my regular life now, but like with you guys, I see I have to go back. You still to have to do it. From, yeah, I have to do that. So no, isn't that great. another th- crazy thing though? Like seeing the extreme, right? When you're so used to fighting, and then you finally get out of that, like your home and your neighborhood, and you see people who deal with it differently. You like ready to scrap up, and they right. like talking, and you like, what the hell? Let's talk about this. Talk about what? Yeah. Asia, we talk about. We talk about it later. <laughs> After I fuck you up and I'm tired, yes. then we're gonna sit down and talk. Yeah. That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. Right. I fought every single one of my siblings, including my older ones. Yeah. My forty-some year old brother, my sister, my brother. I fought my father. I fought my mother. Right. I fought everyone. I mm-hmm. fought teachers. Like it's just it's been to that point. So now it's like. I need to just chill because not everyone is this way. Right. Or even when you get into those work environments where it's like, you can't just talk to everybody crazy. Exactly. Girl, I worked at Build-A-Bear and this <laughs> white bitch fucking manager tried my ass. I was like 17. I cussed her ass out and walked out. <laughs> oh I'll need God. this job. Dad, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> I went off. Uh-huh. Yeah, but that was the last time I did that at work. I never did that again. <laughs> then I, I, I learned my lesson. I turned 18, got me a real job. I like Build-A-Bear. It's just, I don't know, when I start like, changing my circle of friends and stuff, at, like, and they didn't do that, you know, when I got ready to fight people, um, I would tell, you know, my first thing, if you disrespect me, is like, okay, let's fight. Like, I'm still now in my 20s, I'm telling my friends, like, I'm going to beat your ass. Like, that's what I lead with. <laughs> When's and the last time you fought? Whew. <laughs> so the last time I fought was uh, two, me and my sister, Thanksgiving. So my sister came over. Uh, my whole family uh, came over. Uh, two thousand. We're eighteen right now, so it's two thousand sixteen. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's the whole ago. family thing. Yeah, so it was two years ago. It was two years I ago. You, I got you beat, bitch. When, when the last time? When the last time you? Like April. 
<laughs> you go first. Please. Yeah, you go first. Yeah, you go first. Well, yours was more recent. No, like... I would... <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, like me and my sister always fought growing up. We did. Like that's what we do. If we're arguing about something, we're going to fight over a toy, the last piece of chicken. Me and my sister are scrapping, and she's a big bitch. Like she is not small, so don't feel sorry for her. She's just as tall as I am, except that bitch got some weight on her. And when she hit, she lands. So like she grew up fighting me. My sister boxed. So... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I wouldn't want to fight her. And, and then she, the thing about her is that she doesn't have a stop. Like, you know, I'm you, now, I you, have a oh, so you see red. Yeah, you she see sees red. red and you see it in her eyes. So getting back to the story, you know, my sister, my family was there and they were messing up my house. My sister's baby was just throwing stuff all over. And I was like, bitch, I just moved into this bougie ass apartment and y'all are just messing up my stuff. <laughs> so I checked my sister. I was like, Nuki, you know, you your baby messing up my stuff. And she was like, my baby ain't doing a damn thing. Don't come and talk about my motherfucking baby. I'm like, okay, now, bitch. <laughs> One, watch who you talking to and remember who the fuck I am and where you are. Now, your baby is messing up my stuff. Now, that's me. What I was just doing was he learning was, my tools. Yeah, I was, was like, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to do this with them. Just and okay, don't, 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 you're, you're triggering me right now. You're disrespecting <laughs> me in my house. Those are my triggers. Don't do it. So I was like, Shoot, you heard what that motherfucking said? My baby ain't do nothing. I was like, mama, come get this girl, but I kick this bitch. <laughs> And my son, you ain't gonna do nothing, bitch. Kick me, bitch. You bad. And I was like, oh, bitch, that's so I tapped the bitch with my toe. <laughs> now, to tell you, my sister hates feet. Like, she has a phobia of feet. I forgot that. I knew it growing up, but hell, bitch, I ain't seen it. I ain't lived with her in the past 11 years. So I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot that she has a phobia. My sister got up and she just freaked the fuck out. Like, I mean, red and everything. And we just start, like, she came at me like she was a damn bear. So I'm telling you, she's big. So. I don't know. I just naturally, I just caught back and I was like, oh, bitch, pop. I just, I just popped. You just got four, bitch? That was some, that was some I, Mayweather I shit. Caught, right? yeah, I was like, bitch, I, I was doing kickboxing and stuff then, so I just, I have to stop this big bitch. I know how she is. So I had to pop her and then she's like, to try to like, nuke it, stop now. And then we started wrestling and my mom broke it up and, and I stopped. I was like, you know, she knows she can talk to me. Tony, calm down, calm down. Go in the room. So I'm in the room. And, sister, in your own house. You got to go in the room house. in your own house. My sister's in there breaking stuff. My, we are when we get angry in my family we get angry so she was breaking and tearing stuff oh, off I hate when I do that house. because afterwards you're like damn we gotta yeah. replace this shit yeah but you so, don't think about it at the time anyway she started throwing knives and stuff to try to cut people and I was like Nuke I'm calling the police I can't do this and the police came and it was like uh, you know took statements and I met and I was like yep she was messing up my house and I told her I was gonna kick her she told me not to kick uh, I wouldn't kick her so I tapped her with my foot and then of course you know they saw my place and she said her story and I was like well so we're gonna take your sister to jail I was like, good. And we also gonna take you. To <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, what? And it was like, yeah, because oh domestic, you know, you know, for domestic battery, and yeah, you put your foot on her, so you're not supposed to put your foot. <laughs> I, was like, I tapped her with my toe. No, no, you still, you're not supposed to. You have to learn to put your foot, keep your foot on the ground. Oh so. My my next door neighbor, which is a good friend of mine, is my attorney as well. So I'm like, no, bitch, call, call for all that. Call for all that. <laughs> so yeah, me and my sister had to stay you in to jail. Keep your feet to yourself. Well, he said, keep your feet to yourself. So me and my sister back in a bo- uh, police car taking mud shots <laughs> <laughs> on Thanksgiving. Oh my We're locked God. up. We have to spend a the night there because for domestic battery, you have to. Did be in you get jail to eat Thanksgiving dinner? 24- I did not eat anything. I, I just considered it as a fast. I was like, Lord, you know, just consider this my fast and praying moment right now. I'm just going to take a take oh, wow. take advantage of this opportunity right now to speak to you, Lord. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, I was more angry for one. I didn't have any Thanksgiving food because they was just passing out these peanut butter uh, sandwiches. And I, I, I ain't doing that. And then on top, I couldn't go to Black Friday and shop. I was really looking forward to it wow. that year. My ass was in jail. I didn't get out until the next night at 7 p.m. So, I'm actually surprised that you were out because it's not like a holiday. It was again? a holiday, but they still had they didn't like them go to court. Right? Yeah, they, still, they, they have court to... there. It's oh, like okay. a judge or whatever that still works on, on, on the oh, holiday. Oh, okay. And it was the day after. It wasn't. It was on Thanksgiving that we went because it's right. Thanksgiving morning. But so, you're thinking like, like that Friday. weekend, like most of them be gone right. on vacation. So what ended up happening? They end up dropping the charges because it's brother and sister. Like right. nobody's gonna. You can't. You don't have a case between that. And that's both of me and my sister's first like. Offense. Angry, offense when yeah. it comes to violence. So let me ask you this: So what happened between you and your sister after that? Oh, yeah, we did not talk for a whole year and a half. <gasps> like I would not talk to my sister for nothing because, for one, I still feel disrespected. I felt that she, you know, the breaking the shit in my house and all this other stuff. Like I yeah, can't talk to you. Lot. And for one, did I you go to the same jail? 
Yes, we was in the same jail. In the same cell? Oh, and I left her in jail, by the way, for a whole week. <laughs> I built myself out, and I was the only one that could afford to build. So, yeah, I had to teach no! her a lesson. I was really fucking mad. See? I was mad. So, no, you I had, bet. So, you hold grudges. Yes, I hold grudges. Oh, yes. Oh, so that's one thing I, I don't hold do. grudges. I try, I try to forgive people now, but it's very hard. Like, I'm still holding on a grudge for about two years now. And it's like, so I still forgot mad. I some, at some people, not to my sister, oh. but at some people, it's like, and I, I forgot where I'm at, but I know I have a grudge and I'm going to keep on, I'm going to hold on to it. See, I can do that. I and, work on that. And I'm working on, work on that. On. That's something that makes me angry though, because mm-hmm. I'm so forgiving and I forgive yeah. you time and time and time and I forget about it and I have a good fucking time with you and then you fuck me over again and then I'm like okay I get mad then I get over it we're having a good time and then you do it again now I'm like okay you know what bitch right. you taking yes. you doing too much yes, now friend. and I'm about to beat your ass that's exactly what it is you had too many yes. good times with me yes too I tell many good you times. hey this, this disrespected me you know can we not do this right. I'll talk to you first time okay second time hey now listen now bitch I, I'm telling you <laughs> You're doing the same thing I told you about the first time. Like, listen, right. work with me. And by the third time, no, bitch. Like, you know what? And at this age, like I said, I just, I cut him off. Because yeah. I'm because i going to fight you. If so, so, yeah. What, how are you going to change that part? So, what I'm, I'm reading self-help books. Okay. okay? Uh, the of Art of Not Giving a Fuck is great. The Art of Not Giving a Fuck really helped me. Um, how to Win Friends and Influence People is a really good it, book. Yeah. It's a really good Which book. Which one is it? Um, okay. How to Win Friends and Influence People. You guys know you go to www.audibletrial.com <laughs> forward slash shit I'm 30. Yes. Any of these books, you'll get them for free. Yes. Literally free. Love Audible. So, yeah, and I read those books and it kind of just, you know, helped me. And then on top of that, a lot of my friends are older. So, some of them have really, like, you know, pulled me to the side and just try to, you know, Tell me, hey, this is where you could have, you know, managed this right. a little bit better. It's good to have friends like that. It does. It does. So, yeah, I'm in a point in my life now, like I said, I'm trying. And it's hard. Yeah. But I'm trying to sit down and have conversations with people. I'm trying not to get angry quickly. You know, yeah. I'm trying not to take offense to We got to try it. This was your worst fight. But then the worst fight, like physical fight I've ever been? I've never <laughs> been in a physical fight. I've like, I used to have a problem with like the way I would speak to people when I would get upset and it was usually just with guys I've never had like an issue with like a female but it would be somebody I'm dating I would like tear them down with my words but I don't do that anymore because when I would do it I would always feel shitty afterwards yeah and you do you know what I mean after I fight I feel bad but I've learned that I actually win when I clearly and calmly let them know how they made me feel Mm. I am just starting to do that Mm. and I'm and and, and, (sighs) Because when you it's, cuss them out or hit somebody, all that they focus in on is your response. They forget right. about what they actually what they did, did to you to like, upset right. you. Right. You know, Tiffany Haddish was on um, Red oh, Table Talk with uh, Jada Pinkett. Yes, Pitkin. yes. And then, you know, she was telling her about her anger issues and stuff like that. And, you know, Jada was like, you know, they go, you, you have to go high. And she's like, no, fuck high. I want to go low because being right. low feels good. It feels good to cuss a motherfucker out and let them know, like, so where you had good. me fucked up. This is where you had me fucked up. <laughs> right here. Don't right, do it again. right here, Don't not come, there, yeah, but here. Not here. You know, that's sitting down talking to them. It takes a big person, and I'm trying to be that big person. Yeah. I'm in my 30s. I'm trying to, you know, tr- trying to right. walk the path of enlightenment, trying to better myself yeah. all around. As so, should. and just better my relationship. So, I've learning. I'm learning that I'm losing yeah. more friends by a cutting them off, and then getting extremely upset. But number two, things. we're losing friends not only because we're growing right. and we're getting better. I feel like. We're definitely growing with our anger, but we're also getting older and our expectations of our friends and the things that were that it's fun for us or our vision for life is changing. Mm-hmm. Our mm-hmm. perspective of life is changing. Exactly. So if somebody's staying behind where we were three years ago, we're like, baby, I'm past that stage. Oh, yeah. I'm here now. Yes. So yes. you'll lose friends because of that also. But you also lose friends because they're still maybe in that fighting stage or they d- still don't know how to communicate. And if or they don't see that you're trying to change right. and still trigger you and push that button to get like a reaction out of you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm learning to take responsibility for my own actions. Mm-hmm. You know, when it comes to me and a, a, a disagreement or a conflict with anyone, I am constantly now self-reflecting and saying, Anthony, that's a big how, one, Anthony. Yes. What did you what do you what did you do in this situation? Like fuck what the other person did. You can't mm-hmm. control that. Let's talk about what yes. you can control, which is yourself. Yeah. So tell me what was it? And I'll have these conversations with myself. What was it that triggered and you should. me? Yeah. And I'll get down to the root of the, the root of the issue. And then sometimes, nine times out of ten, I probably took something out of context. Right. And now I'm able to come to this person, hey, this is exactly what made me angry. Did you mean this? Yeah. No, I did not. This is what I meant. 
Okay, good. Because yeah. I thought I was going to have to kick your ass. That's what, <laughs> but no. don't say that part. Don't say that part. Right. That's what saved my friendship with Dex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was exactly yeah. that. I had yeah. to, before I said, because I, I was going to pull up to her house <laughs> and beat this bitch ass. Yes, yes. Like it was, and I know she can't fight, so I knew I was going to drag her. I'm going to be so fucked your ass. I knew hands and feet, because I was like, did she just, did, what the fuck? And I sat back. I didn't respond again. I waited till the next day. Mm-hmm. Again, I read it and I said, I need to call and ask because yeah. god damn it I really like this bitch yeah. right so mm-hmm. let me see what it is mm-hmm. and when we talked about it it's like it, I got what she was feeling right how, what I was feeling we were like alright and we were it. both emotional at the moment right and so uh-huh. waiting and then having that conversation and then also being able to be like let me apologize first I'm mad at you but let me apologize for what I did right. first. Let me set the tone right. of this conversation because actually I do want things to be okay with us. And that's, the, and that's the first thing I said. I said, I can't come at her wrong. How am I going? That's why it took me so long that morning. It was like late morning. <laughs> I said, if I call her right now, I'm going to cuss her out first. Right, right. And then she come at me the wrong, if I say the wrong thing and she got her smart math on, I'm still going to show up. Right. <laughs> and I'm trying to save this friendship. So I, I practiced that. And what I have found is that sometimes in order for me to get to that point of forgiveness i i was like you know i try to find fault in my logic right Mm -hmm. and then after the conversation like or while i'm having a conversation with someone they're telling me exactly how they feel and i was like okay i accept it i become empathetic with it right but then after the conversation i go home and i replay everything you know in my mind i'm like you know what no bitch that was that that (laughs) that doesn't make any sense you was justified for the way you felt because xyz so Mm -hmm. I'm struggling with that now. Like, I would have a conversation and, you know, like I said, I, okay, I, I accept how you feel. Mm-hmm. And then, boom. But I, sometimes I'm you sorry. can accept yeah. how they feel and say, I want to I wanna still walk away. No, and, yeah. and your feelings can be justifiable, but it's your reaction to your feelings. Ah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? My feelings are hurt because you really did disrespect me. Right. But that don't mean that I had to curse you out for disrespecting exactly. me. Exactly. I could have let you know. Oh, that, I thought hey, you were saying that would mean I got to beat you up. I can cuss you. Yeah. <laughs> so your feelings could be totally valid. Right. Yeah, but your reaction and your expression of your feelings is the issue. And that's what you can't control. Exactly. We can't control exactly. our feelings, but we can right. control our actions. I keep right. telling so myself like, that. Let me apologize yes. for what I did. I cursed you the fuck out mm-hmm. when you hurt my feelings by doing X, Y, Z. And that gives them the right. opportunity to understand that they hurt your feelings because maybe they didn't know. And apologize even if they did know and correct their actions right. so they know going forward, hey, so and so is sensitive about this particular thing, yes. and let me approach it differently. I don't so, know. Yeah, your oh, feeling valid. Valid. Mm-hmm. Your response and your expression of your feeling, because it's so anger is a real thing. It is. It's we, an emotion. We can't yeah. all gonna say get we're it. not going to get angry. It's yeah. how you express. You're going to get angry if the light changes too fast. You're going to yeah. get angry for like the stupidest things. How you react? And I don't know where I read this, but I'm. It's everywhere. It's like no one can make you mad. Right. Yes. You allow someone else to make you angry. And I've talked about this, I believe, with Ayana a few times. She's like, oh, they just make me so mad. She made me this. I said, no. You're allowing them into your space. Mm-hmm. And when I get angry and I'm about to just go off and I said, I'm not going to allow you to mm-hmm. make me get out of character. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to allow you to make me act a fool. Right. I'm not going to allow you to let me go to the point where I'm going to end up in jail. Right. And right. the one with the mugshot is me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like when I've gotten, I know after the rough stuff that I had in my relationship, I got to the point where I told them, I will not allow you to let me get to this again because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now you better watch exactly what you do because if I feel this way again, I'm walking out because I already know that if I stay, I'm going to do A, B, and right. C. Exactly. exactly. So, but I, it's, it, if I act out again, if I start fighting again, or if I break some shit again, it's because I allowed you to make me feel that right. way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't want to do that anymore. Yep. And I would also say, just to add to that, when you come to those, when you are practicing getting better with your anger and your expression of your anger, when you come to those people and you know you're actually working through it and doing the right thing, when they don't respond properly, those are the people you need to distance yourself yes. from. Yeah. So, like, you know, we're saying, you know, cutting people off like it's a bad thing. It's not always a bad thing. Oh, my God. You know who just has Some people can't come. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Some people can't come. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. You know, to talk about forgiveness, so the forgiveness of my sister. And she and I had to sit down. Um, I I went up there for um, Mother's Day, and I saw my sister, and I was like, you know what, girl? 
I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for putting my feet up, foot on you. You know, I understand that you do have a phobia of feet. As right. crazy as that shit is, by the way. Side note. Right. But yeah. anyway, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for everything else. And, she, you know, she apologized again. It was so sincere. And we moved on. And, you know, it felt good. So, yeah, just talking. I... I I, I it took me a year and a half to get there because I think if I would have talked to my sister within that first year, I still would have felt the same way. So yeah, taking right. time to actually, you know, calm down from the situation and think about it, so you can just come and just like I wouldn't know hey. how to do that now. Like I've cut a, cut off my my mother, mm -hmm. and it's it just hit a year. I haven't spoken to her. I've had no need to, and I've recently been sitting here thinking like, do I approach her? Absolutely. Yeah. Do I do? Because I've thought about I maybe I don't I don't necessarily want a a relationship i don't want to maybe build one again but i'm tired of like i don't know because i stopped being angry mm -hmm. i already stopped being angry but i feel some type of way yeah so it's like i can say it and i can still but how would you how would you myself. solve your how would you solve that if you don't talk to her well there's no solving okay i just so, i want to like finally speak my piece mm -hmm. and maybe just leave it there okay. because when i gave the options to make it better it was which is therapy they said no she said no so there's no point in me staying there. But I think the, my last conversation was so rough that I probably should say something. I don't know when or if. I struggle with do I want to or do I just leave it the way it is and keep it, keep it pushing. I think you, everybody I think, should I talk. It's, it's yeah. your mom. It's a critical relationship. But I, I don't think, think so. with you saying that you're going to go and speak your piece, you try to speak your piece and that's not going to go the way that you want or need it to go. I think in the situation with you and your mom, it's a matter of you accepting that that is your mom and that's not going to change about her. So starting a relationship with her again, but at a safe distance and knowing that, that would have to be certain, like things that she, Florida. certain things that you're just not going to get certain things from her. So you don't go into those areas with those expectations. Exactly. I, I have to like you lower my expectations. Yeah, unfortunately time. you yeah. do, especially when it comes to a family member and a loved one. Yeah. We need to stop holding our, our family members accountable for um certain things we expect for them to act a certain way and process to meet things our standards to meet our standards yeah. and we'll always be disappointed i had to learn that because my mom my, my whole family used to do that to me right. and i will cut myself off from them but then when i stop uh, having putting the pressure on them to live up to this expectation mm -hmm. of you know whatever standard i had for them I, it just didn't bother me as much right because it's crazy it took for my father to pass away the closest thing i had right for me to change and say, okay, all this screaming, all this fighting is not, it is not taking me nowhere. And now the only man that's going to bail me out is gone. <laughs> that's a quick realization. He's he not here to bail me out. Right. So I changed my ways, but now I'm, I just feel stuck. Like I'm changing and I'm fixing, but do I go back to what triggers me? Because I know when I step foot back there, I'm going to get triggered. And I don't know. I You're question myself. Tri triggered with your expectations. I yeah. do think I do think Carla, um, you tried to go to therapy with you and her. I think you should go to therapy um, with, for yourself mm -hmm. and talk to someone about it. Uh, and the reason being is that you don't want because the relationship with your mom is such a important relationship, and it might spill over into other relationships, like it, friendships, it but does. everything, the way it's you raise important. your child, and everything. It is important. Yeah. You it's have important. a daughter too, so you don't exactly. want her to look up and see the example that you, you and your mom are doing, and to have her exactly. adapt to that as it's well. And unfortunately, the relationship that her and I have now is the same relationship, and I'm seeing it now at 30. It's the same relationship she has with her mother. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want that trend to continue. But it's a matter of some people are not going to do the work. Your mom is not going to do the work. Yeah. His sister's not going to do the work. So you mm -hmm. deal with them in a certain way. He knows since he's somebody doing the work, even if his sister baby come in there with red Kool-Aid on the walls, I just have the to way that it. he approached that has to be totally different. Mm -hmm. Come here, baby. Give me the cup. Yeah. You know, just give me the cup. And baby. we tried this the second time. Um, just recently when you saw pictures of my mom came mm -hmm. down for my Supreme Saturdays. Um, this is the first time all of us was together and they just came down out the blue to go to my party. Yeah. And um, awesome. me and my sister was dancing in the middle of the, um, in the middle of the club like we did when we were kids. Yeah. And my mom was on the sideline like cheering us on like Aww. she used to do when we were young. That's so cute. And she was like, oh my God, thank you so much for a wonderful trip. Like, and Tony, thank you so much. And she had to thank me because she knew nothing changed about them. That little badass little boy was still going around right, breaking exactly. my shit. 
the way you look at it. The way I looked at it, it was like, it's cool. It's you know? not the end of and the world. And even if I need to go, to, uh, I'm going to go for a drive. I'm hanging with my friends yeah, exactly. tonight. You guys right. go ahead and chill. Peace mm-hmm. on me, blah, blah, blah. Yep. I'm just going to go ahead and step away. When people not doing the work and they have issues, you have to move around them differently when they're those family members that it's it actually hurts you to cut them off yeah it does and it, that's yeah. the, the same thing i had with a friendship it's like i expected something i didn't get it and now i'm like i why am i sitting here hurt right like i need to get over certain things you still have that love i love too hard no, and that's I why i be getting mad because no, i think i'm a soft bitch and no, i'm like i'm a fucking right, thug because right. your <laughs> anger is making you feel like <laughs> i'm a hard bitch your that, anger I, is yeah. making you feel like loving people is not natural like this person hurt me i'm supposed to hate them no like you don't have yeah. that in your heart you just i have don't. such a big soft heart they be trying same me same thing with me too carla that's the thing i am so empathetic i love yes. everyone it's just like guys and so when i'm angry with you it's just dude you this disrespect thing that like I told I you, and that I have to prove that I'm not. Look, I'm not a softy motherfucker. I will fuck you up. Yeah, I, <laughs> taking me back to when I was in school. I feel like I gotta that. let people know that because yeah. it's like they and see my don't. soft side. We don't. My friend, I took a friend of mine, month, um, years ago. He was like Tony, you don't have to prove anything to nobody. Right. You don't. You don't. You don't. And when he said that he broke it down. You're this. You're that. Yeah. You are. I'm trying so to get don't prove that. it. Right. Just, just. I ain't gonna yeah. prove shit to y'all motherfuckers no more. Because <laughs> what makes what we're proving? I can prove. I can beat your ass. Right. Like I, that's right. when I'm proving something. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I don't like. And you're arguing. also proving that they can move you. Yeah. Yeah. Now I never used to understand that until recently about how yeah. somebody having control over your anger and stuff. I'm, if you want to control it, motherfucker, welcome. Here's the beast. Like, <laughs> this what you want? You have let now. Here's your, now what you gonna do? You asked right. for it. You ask for it. Yeah. yeah. So when that I happened to me now. recently, I didn't think I would get out of character. Like, I haven't fought in so long. Mm-hmm. Like before that, it had been forever. So when that happened, I was just like, "Well, damn, girl, I she's fought, still in there." I fought the day, the night before my daddy's funeral Ooh. at the club. I. 21 my cousin was in the club with us under um under age and he always used to get drunk and just like you know he'll be, he was a ladies man so he'll always be dancing on girls and he was bumping in this boy so i'm sitting back watching the whole thing the boy pushed him and you know my cousin's like okay he's just dancing mm-hmm. and then he fell on the boy again the boy pushed him again my cousin pushed back and next thing you know i saw the push and start getting like really heated and i jumped in and started throwing hands <laughs> like it was no question you're already I going jumped, through some shit right I, but it was even if it was that, it was just like, just I was just taught, that that was like, you. immediately, yeah. no, you don't wait, nigga, you No, yeah. you can't you fight, wait, and you, you don't, don't talk wait. either. You don't talk. You just, And I'm I'm fighting, like, three dudes all at once, yeah. and then it was just like, that the, sounds the, familiar. Like the security <laughs> guards had to come and throw me out at the club and everything, and I'm ready to go back in, and then it took one of my, the rest of my cousins was ready to go back in to fight. One of my older cousins was like, nah, dude, we're not doing this. We're you ever got beat up? This. You I know, I time. have. I've gotten my. I, when I was younger, I got my ass. Well, I've, I've gotten jumped a lot because I'm tall. I got I'm a tall. bitch move in seventh grade, and I'm gonna call her ass out. What the fuck was this bitch <laughs> named? Rhonda Jones. Mm. So I, she probably listening. So back in seventh grade, I called me middle school white ass school. This big ass black girl, big. She had a twin brother to Ron, Look at listen to the name Rhonda Jones. That just sounds like a big bitch. A yeah. <laughs> rhinoceros. Was, right. And you know, in seventh grade, I had like big curly hair, a unibrow, like whole mustache hairy legs like I was such a tomboy I was walking to the lunchroom and there was this other girl named Tanya I know you know girl this other girl named Tanya so Tanya stops me by the stairs and she's like oh I need to tell you something and I'm sitting here like what what are you we weren't really friends so she stopped me by the stairs so Rhonda could come up from behind me and throw me down the stairs oh wow so I tumble down these damn stairs and here come Rhonda behind me to fight and I just remember like Duke's going out I'm like I'm not I'm about half her size, if not a third. Mm -hmm. And we're fighting, going at it. Um, She beat my ass, but I got one good lick to her face. (laughs) Because she scratched me from, like, my eye down to my chin. I had bumps, and, like, my face was fucked up. And now I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to be ugly forever. (laughs) My mom shows up, and my dad. And my parents pressed charges on her. She ended up having to write me a letter and all kinds of stuff. Now she wants they wanted to do something to me because she had a bump on her face. And I remember lying for years saying, that wasn't me. She hit herself. <laughs> it wasn't me. Because <laughs> I couldn't admit it because then they would suspend me too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think my mom still has like the letter that the girl wrote me and she did community service. But I was like, that was a bitch move. Mm-hmm. Like what? That's how you can beat me up. Yeah, that's how. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, and then they I'll, asked yeah. her, why did she do that to me? She said, I don't know her. I just don't like her. Oh, wow. For no reason. Oh. 
But it's she crazy. did. She hit me hard. <laughs> I'm all for, I think after that, I knew that I couldn't. I I had to watch my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't fight anymore now. I'm not gonna fight you now. I, I just really won't. That doesn't that doesn't even come to my mind. Like when someone is disrespecting me, I just I just walk away. I, yeah. I, I just it's not that, worth it. That, that becomes my reaction now. So yeah, it's I, not. I'd worth be walk it. away at y'all because it's. It's I got too much to lose, and I have a much. whole child that what she can't. What is she gonna do if right. I go to jail? Her daddy's not around. Right. Where am I gonna leave her? Plus, it's World Star now. <gasps> right. You gonna be, uh, you gonna oh, be so viral. viral. Bro, and I got this like popping ass podcast. Yeah. You know they're gonna put me on baller viral. alert. <laughs> if you get a freaking right. mug shot, like oh my gosh, like imagine. all that stuff. That's like, how I was in jail when I was sitting. I was like, damn it, it's gonna be Tony the Realtor. <laughs> Uh, realtor, realtor, Tony the realtor was caught fighting on Thanksgiving. Him and his sister both spent the night in jail. <laughs> I can, I, I just knew the headlines was going to get out. Oh my god, I so. would die. Yeah. I think we have gotten to a point now where we can recognize our triggers. Yes. Um, I think we've. It never hurts to go to therapy. I'm going to look back into going to therapy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just because there's other things. I, I think now I have to deal with more of other emotional issues because I. I can stop myself from fighting somebody at this point. Yeah. I can walk away. I can say, I don't have, honey, I don't have time for your bitch ass. I think for you, Carla, at this point, the anger is just to protect you from being vulnerable because you're not comfortable with that. Not anymore. Because you're like, okay, if I'm But I'm wide open for everybody all these years. If I'm vulnerable, then you can hurt me, but it's right. like, it's not going to kill you. Yeah, that's what my, it was It was a protection thing of my yeah. vulnerability because I thought that people see I'm soft. They're just like, you know, they'll take advantage of me. And, and they do. They, yeah. they, I've been taking advantage so often because I forgive so easily. Yeah. So it's like, oh, she's mad. She forgave. She's mad. She fought. She's over an hour later. She's mad. She'll get over it. Let me do it again. And don't play with me no more. I'm not a toy. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> mad so let's do one quick um unsolicited advice i have a letter and it says i'm coming to you all because i'm too embarrassed to go to my circle again this is unsolicited didn't ask us for a fucking opinion but we're gonna give it to them anyway because we do shit like that around here so whether you like it or not here it goes i had an appointment with my OBGYN today that sent me to the main hospital to have an ultrasound done because of an issue with fibroids as i am boarding the elevator i see a guy grinning from ear to ear with a hospital band on carrying a teddy bear from the gift shop adjacent to the radiology waiting area that looked like my husband. I texted him and said, hey, what are you doing? He replied, hey, baby, I'm on my lunch break. Knowing him from anywhere, I walked up behind him and tapped him on the shoulder as he prepared to board the elevator with an it's a boy balloon, bubblegum cigar, a bubblegum, a cigar, and the teddy bear, teddy bear in hand. He looked like he saw a ghost, and I slapped the dog shit out of him and ran out of the hospital. I have been in the garage in my car for the past two hours because my mind is so foggy, I can't think straight to drive. He keeps calling me and texting me, but I'm numb, saddened, and shocked. We have been married for two long years and together for four. I did some investigating and find out the chick he had the kid with is his ghetto-ass ex-girlfriend baby mama from hell. We don't have any kids because I miscarried twins last November. Mm-hmm. I do not know what to do. I'm so hurt. Please help. Break up with him. him. That's, <laughs> that's, Break up with him. Yes. That's all to it. Yeah, wow. That's it. That's it. That's it. I mean, trust is broken. A child is born. Now, this is a Kirk and Rashida type situation. For real. And the thing about it is, baby, we're not getting paid off this. No. So do they have mom- kids? Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. Oh, okay. They have they their do. own kids, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Break up with him. Break up. I- like, we don't got time for that bullshit. Yeah. Wow. And then I hope he has money so you can actually sue, um, um, divorce him and try to take. Um, take. Now he's finna have child support. Yeah, he is finna have child support. Two, because it's his ex baby, mo- ex girlfriend baby mama. So yeah. now he has two children with this hoe. Yeah. This, these niggas. Okay. Break up with him. You know what? I don't know what my shit talk gonna be. <laughs> I already got this. She does have to break up with him. I, I can't even imagine just having gone through miscarrying twins. Right. right. And now seeing you happy as fuck going up an elevator at the hospital. Bitch, he's lucky. Yeah. He just got a slap. Right. Because I would have drug, like, dragged his ass to that goddamn hospital. He's already at the hospital, so they're not going to let him die. <laughs> I'm going to take you right to the point where you're about to die. And then they're going to take you upstairs to the room. I couldn't be married to him and knowing I miscarried with twins, and but know that he had There's, a child. You can't forgive like, that. I couldn't, the child will be a reminder every day mm-hmm. of the infidelity that Our God is a great God, but I don't think he can just, just erase that. <laughs> unless he gives me like complete amnesia yeah. where I can't right. remember shit. You got to right. end that. You do. You do. That's wow. 
Did you guys hear about the D.L. Hughley story, I supposedly? Did. Mm-hmm. did you see that shit? I did, yes. I still don't really understand it. So he had an affair on his wife. Is she rich or something? He had an affair on his wife, mm-hmm. got the lady pregnant, mm-hmm. didn't tell the wife. Mm-hmm. The baby was nine months old. Mm-hmm. The boyfriend of the side chick found out that it wasn't his baby, killed the baby when the baby was nine months old. Mm-hmm. He, the chick comes back, and the wife of D.L. Hughley has been paying this woman for years after the baby died. Why was she paying her though? Uh, that's I'm trying to, no. She said so. DL Hughley had an allowance from his wife, and he's saying she took my allowance, and my allowance now now goes to her. Although the baby is dead, she was paying the lady to keep quiet so they they could have a fairy tale image. That's, I thought about that, but it just don't make no sense. When, right? When did the story come out, though? Did it just? He just talked about it, so no one knew about this no. baby at all. So but maybe she baby was gone. trying to like ask for more money. And he was like, "You know what, bitch? Before you leak this, I'm gonna leak this myself." Kevin and that's probably what he did. Yeah, oh, that's probably what he maybe. did. Maybe. I mean, we don't already know this, but but I'm still trying to figure out one: why did he have an allowance? And two, why is the wife the one paying? So my, my grandma does it with my grandpa. What? She don't work. He gives her his check. Stop. And she gives him an allowance. She, Get out of here. She, she takes care of the money. That is amazing. So That's totally, very common. Yeah, yeah, I could totally understand I've never that. seen no type of shit Especially, like that. and it might be mm-hmm. that he's not great with money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, okay, here's the money that you get. Well, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. And I'm taking the rest of the money to handle the bills, our savings, retirement, hmm. all that. But that's not un- uncommon. I've never my seen My grandma that. does it. That shit don't she really happen. in the $40 um, a week. How much? 40 <laughs> She's your granddaddy forty dollars. She gives him forty dollars. You know, it sounds like my grandma and my granddaddy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, I guess, this is, a, this is something that differentiates us from the Hispanic and the black community. We have so much in common, yeah. but oh these Hispanic God, yeah. men are not going to give women a goddamn thing. You know, black women. You know what I mean? Like we don't, they don't like care. They hand don't over that the check. check. It ain't no question. They oh, will, no. Some black women will go to your job on Fridays to get yeah. that check before you get off. Exactly. See, you know, these Spanish men. The back so I can mm-hmm. deposit exactly. this. They're exactly. old these Spanish men was I don't fuck with them. They they, they put hands on people. <laughs> Dude, our motherfuckers just be slap a hoe and you know no yeah. my grandma's been and granddaddy have like always mm-hmm. had that that's they crazy. always had it that's what it is the women just you know take what? care of the house it's, yeah it's, it's my man home I'm gonna tell me and give me all his money I'm gonna handle this shit he can get $40 if your granddaddy can live off $40 he can live off $40 too I mean I don't think and that includes his gas money yeah. <laughs> it's like only thing I need Mary is a bill yeah. and some and some cigarettes yeah. that's it just give my money just yeah. give me the rest of that and hit $40. That's enough. That's all you yeah. need to take that care of everything crazy. else. That is crazy. Yeah. Man. Well, honey, leave him. Break up with him. Go yeah, ahead and tell, tell him. Without, tell him how you without tell him. hesitation, without a doubt. Like, yeah. yeah it's, not, it's not worth it. Don't stay married. That you, You'll never get over that. Like, yeah. ever. Mm-hmm. Anyways, quick shit talk. Shit talk! <laughs> Let, we t- it was like, I felt like it was a lot today of dudes just fucking up. And we, we always try to shame and say niggas ain't shit. And although it's true... Let's just keep it honest. One, I want to talk shit to the people that trigger us on purpose. And that includes men cheating. So if you already know who I am, what triggers me, that I'm working on it, mm-hmm. stay the fuck from around me mm-hmm. if you can't help me. If you are hurting me more than you are helping me, just stay away. Don't speak. Don't breathe. Don't use my oxygen. Find it somewhere else. Because I, I, I don't have time. Mm-hmm. My friends ain't got time to be fighting. We got stuff to do now. And right. then with these men, it's like, you're doing the same thing to women. You're bringing them and leading them on and selling them a whole, a whole dream. And then doing something else on the side. That triggers women. And that's when they end up on snapped. Mm-hmm. And that's anger and violence. <laughs> so leave us the fuck alone. Whether it's a family member, whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's a friend. If you can't be honest, stay the fuck from around us and triggering us to whoop your ass. Oh, I, I hate a lying nigga. I, yeah, I, I've, I've been through that before, and it's it's kind of hard. You won't know if you're in that relationship until you're actually in that relationship. Right. So, yeah, man, I, I hate that. Don't come lie to me. That that's that's I hate a liar. No. I hate a liar. Like just I can't I can't trust anything else from you at all. So yeah, I agree with you. That that's I, that's my pet peeve. Yeah. So we'll leave it there. Again, I want to remind you guys that August twenty fourth we have the speed friending event here in Orlando at Loud mm-hmm. Gallery. Can't wait. I'm so excited about yes, that. I just I, it's gonna be different. <laughs> it is. We're I, clubbing is cool and all, but I be tired. I need stuff from like that six to ten. Right. Which we, I mean, everybody doesn't have to be there for the whole time. We'll probably start the whole speed fighting right about seven. Give us time to get there after work. So if you want to go cute to work and get there early, let's right. do it. 
Um, but it's like a happy hour with a motive. Like, you yes. know, we're coming to meet new people. It's not like Wind Down Wednesday when you just come and you just sit in that with one your spot. Friends. And you, if you want to network, you can. But this one's like, this is what it's meant for. But I feel like Wind Down Wednesday now, there's not much networking anyway. It's not. You just go not. with your friends because people are coming just be there to pregame for the club. Pregame for the club. Yeah, it's, it's so different. Yeah, when it's so the we'll be started. there. Do some games. Yeah. There is um, bottomless mimosas and sangria and beer and some other stuff. And if if you can't make it, I'm going to make an announcement there on Friday. If not, everyone else will get it on Saturday. That's next week, the 24th and 25th. Then don't forget to please, wherever you listen to the podcast, um, rate us. It's iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio. Just leave a rating and please leave a review. Say whatever you want. Leave me a message. The same way you guys can DM me or leave me a comment. Just leave a review on there. Say whatever you want to say. It doesn't have to be your name. You can change your name. So that really helps the podcast. And again, we reached 10,000 downloads Yay. a month. Congrats. So Congrats. we can only go up from here. Yes. So yeah, we're going to make sure that somebody good sees that. And we can put Orlando podcasting on the map because I feel like here in Orlando, we don't have any. We need it. Oh my God. It's no outlets whatsoever. At we really know. Oh, yeah. something happened with the studio that I was recording at before. And that same day, I'm like, I need to, it was a big interview I needed to do. And there was nowhere I could have gone here in Orlando. Oh, oh wow. Crazy. It was like not one place, but you know, shit happened happens for a reason or then we're gonna get on the map i want to go to atlanta i want to go to new york to do other stuff that yes. I, I had hella fun up there but orlando is where i am and we can i can do this from here all day long mm -hmm. so i will see you guys next week bye. bye bye i'm actually a huge fan of gary v and i listen to everything that he posts i try to follow him on youtube on instagram his podcast and he had something on his podcast recently and it was how to get rid of toxic people. So today we were actually talking about it. And although we just finished recording, I'm like, oh my God, I want to play this clip for everyone to hear it because it, it, I loved it. And I figured you guys can probably love it too. So I'm going to play it real quick for you guys. And um, again, it's Gary V, G-A-R-Y-V-E-E. -E, and you can find his Instagram. He's amazing. An inspirational speaker, a motivational speaker, and he gives it to you like it is, and he uses curse words. So what you're going to hear right now, because you can't hear it in the beginning, is a guy asking him at a meetup, how do you get rid of toxic people? Toxic people in your life. You just have to. Just have to. You know, you're in shape, right? Yeah. How the fuck do you get muscles? You go to the gym and you work. You fucking roll up on your dad, your mom, your sister, and say, fuck you, I'm out. Because you're fucking toxic, and I'll see you in six years if you figure out why the fuck I left. And by the way, just so you know, I do not think that's easy. No. Unfortunately, it's the answer. I don't think getting into shape is easy. Eat right and fucking work. That's right. I appreciate that. You know I what mean, I mean, man? I mean, it's I really, like, right. look, man, like, I'm like, look, I got, like, it's <laughs> like telling somebody to tell their mom to go fuck themselves or their uncle or whatever, it's not fun. Like, you th I, I hope people don't, like, get confused. This isn't fun for me to say. It's the answer. Well, truth's never easy, right? 